I'm going to be talking about Mike Nichols. No reason why, just going to talk about him. Hey everyone, welcome to the top 10 list. Welcome to my top 10 favorite Mike Nichols movies. Yes, Mike Nichols was always a really good filmmaker and always made like a lot of interesting, very different kind of films, comedies, dramas, thrillers, all different sorts of films. And I thought I'd do my top 10 favorite movies of his. No reason why, I just thought I'd do it. So yeah, let's get to it. Here's my top 10 personal, personal favorite Mike Nichols movies. And yeah, before a top 10 list, you gotta have your... Honorable mentions. My honorable mentions are Wit regarding Harry, Wolf, The Day of the Dolphin, Silkwood, Heartburn, and Biloxi Blues. All great films. Just couldn't make the top 10 list, but they made my top 10 was my number 10. My number 10 is Closer. Closer is a movie that was made in the early 2000s, one of his last few films he's made, and this is a great film. This has Julie Roberts, Natalie Portman, uh, Jude Law, uh, is Jude Law, yeah, Jude Law. <laughs> Jude Law, uh, Clive Owen, and this is a great film about relationships, about marriage, commitment, and being faithful and stuff, and it's an interesting movie, very bleak film, and yeah, I love it. It's got great performances, both Clive Owen and Natalie Portman were both nominated for this movie, and they were both so good in this film, and it has a really great twist at the end of the film, I won't spoil, and it's just a fascinating film about commitment and about who to stay loyal to, who is truly in love, who is truly not, who is in it for the wrong reasons or the right reasons. And it's a fa fascinating film with great stellar performances and, yeah, hands down a great film. Coming number nine is Carnal Knowledge. Carnal Knowledge was made in the, the 1970s, I think, and this has Jack Nicholson, Art, Par uh, Art Garfunkel, Art Garfunkel, that's the name, yeah, Art Garfunkel, uh, Kenneth Bergen, and... A lot of other actors. This is a really hard movie to describe because I just watched it the other day because I haven't seen it and it's weird and bizarre and strange. It's about it's about sex. Just gonna flat out say it right there. It's about sex. It's about the nasty sex. <laughs> I don't know I just did that, but um, <laughs> this movie is about. Uh, it's not quite like Kinsey about like educational sex, but it's about like these two buddies and stuff. And they're exploring their sexual desires through different women and through different relationships and I don't want to spoil this movie but it's a lot about it's about sex but it's not like a like a dirty way it's more of like a in like an educational kind of way but not quite like Kinsey I, I don't know if you guys I don't know if you quite understand that but um, it's just a weird bizarre story it's like a dramatic comedy about these two buddies and exploring their sexual you know, sexual desires through different women and stuff. It kind of sounds a little sleazy, but it's a fascinating watch. It's also very funny and really well acted. And Jack Nicholson's fantastic. Very early role of Jack Nicholson. And it's a bizarre movie. It's definitely not for everyone, but I kind of liked it. Coming number eight is Charlie Wilson's War. Charlie Wilson's War is another film I have talked to death about this movie. I talked about it on my Amy Adams list, uh, my Tom Hanks lists, and yeah, it's a great film. It's about a congressman dealing with a lot of different countries and a lot of different politics. It's a great dramatic comedy. This movie's written by Aaron Sorkin, so it's obviously got a great and very clever screenplay. Tom Hanks, uh, Julie Roberts, uh, Amy Adams, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Everyone's fantastic in this movie. It's just an all in great film. You've heard me gush about this movie before. It's awesome. Coming number seven is Catch-22. Catch-22 is a fascinating film. It's a comedic drama. This is a very satirical film uh, about war. It's about a bombardier played by Alan Arkin. It's basically about... He almost has, like, shell shock, and it's basically about him trying to get out of the Navy and stuff. This movie talks about, like, the tragedies and the realism of war, but also, like... I don't know, it's a weird movie. The, the almost, this movie almost comes off like almost borderline satire, but also it's like a very deep and moving, dramatic story about war and tragedies and stuff. And interesting movie. This is a very, a very weird, bizarre film. And to Alan Arkin, Orson Welles, John Voight, uh, again, uh, Art Garfunkel's in this movie as well. A great stellar cast, all of which give great performances. Martin Sheen. Did I say Martin Sheen? I don't know. He's in this movie too, and great performances. He's got a great story. There's a lot of great comedy, but also a lot of really heavy and good dramatic scenes, and yeah, it was a good watch. 
Coming number six is Postcards from the Edge. Uh, Postcards from the Edge is another film I've talked about a few times on this channel, and Meryl Streep's great in this movie. He's got Meryl Streep, Sean McLean. It's a great, interesting mother-daughter dynamic story. It's about an actress who wants to become almost like a singer and stuff. Holly it's about the Hollywood life and the realism of Hollywood and stuff. It's got a great mother-daughter sort of relationship story. It's fantastic. It's got good drama. It's got good. It's got good drama. It's got good comedy. It's got Meryl Streep and Shirley MacLaine. So you know there's some powerful acting in this film. And yeah, great movie. Coming number five is Primary Colors. Primary Colors is a really fascinating film. This is a political movie, and it's about this uh, guy who goes to work for this political party. This uh, this because there's a race for uh, to be president and stuff against these two uh, seven senators and his governor and stuff and. This movie's basically a somewhat true story about the Bill Clinton race, and when Bill Clinton was running for uh, president. They don't call him Bill Clinton in this movie, but he's Bill Clinton. He's played by uh, John Travolta in this movie. He does the Bill Clinton voice and everything. He's not Bill Clinton, but it, it pretty much is Bill Clinton. And John Travolta's in this film. He's hilarious. He's great in this movie. Guy Emma Thompson. The whole story is through the perspective of the main character played by Adrian Lester and basically him joining this party in this race and try to get him to be presidency but they're dealing with this like sex scandal and everything and there's also a great supporting cast guy like Billy Bob Thornton Kathy Bates is in this film she's fantastic and it's a great comedic film and if you love political movies and you love good political comedies then definitely check this one out it's a lot of fun it's a great film Coming number four is Working Girl. Yes, Working Girl. I love this movie. I should talk about this movie more on my channel because I love this film. This is such a good movie. This is a basically a girl. She had like a fiance who cheated on her. Basically, she has to survive on her own. So she gets a job in this office building. She has actually, this is like her first legit like job and like a really good high profile job and everything. She's like an assistant to Sigourney Weaver. And basically, like, Sigourney Weaver is, like, a shitty boss and stuff, and basically when Sigourney Weaver gets to an accident and she has to, like, fill in her shoes with Harrison Ford, yeah, like, it, she starts, like, building a relationship with Harrison Ford, and Harrison Ford starts to learn that Melly Griffith in the movie, Melly Griffith is the main character, that she is, like, built to run industries like this, she's built... She's made to be a businesswoman and everything. And it's almost like a love story between them. It's also a good uh, business story. It's a good story about like the working life and everything. And I, I adore this film. I love its comedy. I love its characters. These characters are such great characters. I love Melanie Griffith. I love Harrison Ford in this movie. They have great chemistry. Sigourney Weaver is fantastic. Uh, Joan Allen is great in this movie. Uh, everyone's fantastic in this film. And I just absolutely love it. More people need to see it. I consider it almost sort of under Rated. It's got an amazing soundtrack. The, so the, the song in the beginning of this movie, I think it was nominated, it might even won Best Song at the Oscars. Great and lovely song, and just a great and lovely movie. Come number three is The Birdcage. Ah, oh, I guess a movie I can get gush over a bunch of times. This is so freaking good. I love it. It's Robin Williams. I love Robin Williams. It's fussy, 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 fussy. In Twyla, in Twyla, Michael Kane, Michael Kane, Madonna, Madonna. <laughs> Love him in this movie. This is so great. You got uh, Rob Williams in this movie. You got Nathan Lane, Hick Azaria, Gene Hackman, Diane Weist. Everyone's fantastic in this film. I uh, love it. The story of this movie is about this uh, young boy. He's come back from college and stuff, and he's getting married. And he's going to see his two dads. Yes, he's got two gay fathers, Nathan Lane and Rob Williams. They own this, like, gay nightclub called The Birdcage. And he's meeting... He wants them to meet the girl he's about to marry, but... Her parents, is played by Diane Weist and Gene Hackman, they're like these very conservative people, and he's like this government figure, and they think he's against like homosexuality, so they want to hide Nathan Lane, they just want Rob Williams to meet him with his mother, the mother, the actual mother in the film, and yeah. It's a fascinating story. It's a great comedic story. I love this movie. It is so funny, so enjoyable. I won't spoil what happens in the second half of the film when they actually start to meet the parents. Fantastic. Won't spoil what happens. It is so funny. Great comedy, great performances, great characters, and just a lovely movie. Coming number two is Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Yes, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Virginia Woolf. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? 
Great film. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth Taylor, I think this is uh, like one of the greatest performances she has given in any film. Yes, everyone can debate A Cat on the Hot Tin Roof or uh, Cleopatra, like back those might be her best. Maybe. Uh, she's better in this movie. I think she is perfection in this film. She, I think she won her Oscar for this movie. I absolutely love it. The screenplay is amazing. The performances are great. It's mostly these four people talking to each other and about their lives and everything. You learn more and more about the main character and how they lost like a child and everything. It is a very compelling, very riveting story. It was based off a of play, so you can tell it's a very personal and humane story. And it centers on these four characters. All of which give great performances, but mostly Elizabeth Taylor. She is so great in this movie, and this is one of the best Mike Nichols movies. It is so good. And my number one favorite Mike Nichols movie is The Graduate. Yes, hello, darkness, my old friend. Simon and Garfunkel, one of the best. Uh, I love this movie. Dustin Hoffman and Bancroft, this movie is so great. Mrs. Robertson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> I love this movie. Mike Nichols' direction is amazing. The Simon and Garfunkel songs are fantastic. Dustin Hoffman, Dustin Hoffman, Hoffman, Hoffman is amazing in this movie. He probably should have won the Oscar. He was so great in this film. And Bancroft is fantastic as Mrs. Robertson. I love this movie. I love the story about this college kid hooking up with Mrs. Robertson, a very older woman and stuff. They're having like a fling, having an affair and everything. It's so good. It's funny. It's deep. It's comedic. It talks about real issues and stuff about what people are going through like after school, what they want to do with their lives and stuff. And it's a fascinating movie. And the ending, the ending to this movie is one of the best movie endings. It is so fascinating when he like runs away with Mrs. Robertson's daughter. They're on the bus together. And you think it's this happy ending. But then the movie continues with this long take of them two looking at each other and thinking, did we make the right choice? And it's just such a compelling and realistic and just a, human, a humanistic way to end a film. It's just like, most like, you know, comedic films will, will end like the cheesy way with the guy giving the speech and they run off to the sunset together and stuff. This one was different. He like, he stops her from getting married and they just, you know, they sit on this bus and they just think, we don't know each other. We don't even know if we like each other. So, did we make the right decision? And it's just fascinating. And that's how the movie ends. And that's just such a smart and clever way to end a film. That's why I think it's one of the best movie endings. And the movie itself is fantastic. I absolutely love it. And it's, of course, of course, it's the best movie that Mike Nichols has directed. Hands down. It's just a masterpiece. So yeah, that was my top 10 personal favorite Mike Nichols movies. So in the comment section, well, please tell me you just agree this top 10 list. If not, what is your top 10 favorite Mike Nichols movies in your opinion? Comment below. Let me know. And as always, for this video, please like, subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.